This tutorial comes straight from the VIP vault. This is a feature that many members have been asking for, a fully functional streak tracking system. So whether it's for user accountability, daily check-ins, habit building, journaling, fitness, lots of use cases, this is something that can seriously boost user engagement. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a streak tracking system that handles consecutive days, missed days, and updates automatically. Let's get into it. We're gonna build out a streak tracker that is gonna help a user keep track of how many days they've checked in consecutively to the application. So in my example here, I'm looking at two months back to back. The check-in on its own is gonna be indicated by the gray square here in our calendar. The current streak that we're on, including today's date, is gonna be marked in orange. So currently I'm on a three-day streak of consecutive check-ins. The green coloring here is going to indicate my best streak. So if I was currently in a streak of five days in a row, this would be both my current and best. And for the coloring, the way that we've set up the logic, it would prioritize the best and it would have uh, highlighted it green here. But since I'm currently in a three day streak only, um, it has not beaten my best streak in the past. And so that's why we have uh, the different coloring here between those two uh, spans of time. So let's take a look at how we accomplish this in the app. The data type that I'm using right now is a simple one called check-in. We're going to have a date associated with it and a user. You can definitely use other data structures for this. It just depends on what exactly you're tracking. Maybe it's goals or habits or accomplishing specific tasks. So that part is up to you. What I'm doing anytime I check into the application is I'm creating a brand new check-in record. So if we go to my sample data set here, I'm currently logged in as this user and uh, these are all records that you know we're simulating the check-ins for this user on different days. Obviously, you can see that I created all of them within the span of a couple minutes here, but that's why I created a separate date field in case I ever want to adjust those. Okay, so going off of the creation date field could give you um, some, could limit you a little bit because uh, if you want to allow your user to make adjustments for the past, like if they wanted, if they forgot to log a check-in in the past, um, having a custom date field will make it easier for them to change that. And any of your logic that needs to look at the dates should go off of that field instead of the built-in creation date because you cannot change that date and time uh, value. The other data type that we're working with is the built-in user data type. And we have four fields that we're gonna be working with here. We have um, a number field to keep track of the current streak count. Okay, so in other words, this would be number three here. And then we have a separate field for the best streak count. And for us right now, that would be four. Okay, so those are those two fields, those numbers. Then we have a current range and a best range. These are date range fields. So for the current range, that would be June 24th to June 26th. The best range would be uh, uh, May 11th to May 14th. Uh, that's gonna help us with a lot of our logic, especially with the color coding here, to make it really easy um, to create that design. Okay, so that's our data structure there. Okay, real quick here. If you're finding this helpful, we have so much more to teach you over in our free extended workshop at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop, where we'll guide you through our four-phase approach for going from idea to app. So if you're looking for a start to finish guide, go ahead and register for that workshop right after this video. You'll get immediate access. For now, let's get back to our lesson. Now, my design is is you know uh, an example of what you can do to display. You certainly don't need to um, design it exactly like this, but we've got a few components here that you'll typically find with any streak tracker, which is how, what is your current streak that you're on right now? And what is the best streak that you've achieved overall? Um, I have a date time picker here in order to create check-ins in the past. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can restrict your user to just create the record you're tracking um, you know, once and they can't edit it, that's completely up to you. So here's what's happening when I click on this check-in button. Let's go to the workflow over here. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we're creating our check-in record. We're gonna save those two values. So in my case, I'm pulling from the date and time picker. You may just wanna pull from the current date and time so it's a real-time value that doesn't get changed. Uh, and then the user, of course, is the current user. 
What I'm going to do next is I'm going to trigger a custom event to retrieve all of my past check-ins. This is going to help me with the logic to know whether I'm continuing a current streak, if I'm starting another streak uh, over, or if this is the first time I've checked in. You can see these three uh, actions that follow here. We're going to need to know um, what we've done in the past already. So this is triggering a custom event I've created here called get check-in list. Okay, you can create a custom event by going to custom right there, create custom event, just like that. And um, within this custom event, I have set up a parameter called newest check-in. Okay, so this parameter is gonna be type check-in. And then I have a return value called check-ins, which is gonna be a list of check-ins. So the parameter for newest check-in is just so that this custom event can receive the brand new check-in that I just created here. So when we trigger, you can see here, that's what I'm passing in, the result of step one. The reason I'm doing that is because when I send back the check-in list, I actually want it to exclude the newest one because I only want to uh, do my math and everything with all of my other check-ins um, that happened before today. So I'm just passing that in for a quick reference, okay? So you can see here with the return data action, Right, we're going to return data as part of this value here, check-ins. I'm taking, uh, I'm doing a search for all check-ins that involve the user. Okay, we are going to sort it by that date. That's going to be important um, so that things go in chronological order. And then you can see here, I'm subtracting out that newest check-in value, that parameter value that was sent in from the previous step. Okay, searching for check-ins minus the newest one. If I didn't have this subtraction, this search would all would, would um, return this newest one because it it already exists, right? It's already created, and we don't want to run into any issues. Um, even if we reordered the actions, I'm just going to make sure that it filters it completely out here. So once that custom event does its thing, we're going to come back into this flow. And now we can reference the result of step two here to access that full list of check-ins minus our new one. So the first action here is in the event that this is the very first check-in the user is doing in the application. So you can actually see these three actions here all have conditions. Only one of them should run at any given time. So the condition for this is only run this action if the list of check-ins from result of step two, right? That's our return data from the custom event. If that count is zero. In other words, we have not had any previous ones. The only check-in we have is that first new one from step one. So if this is our first check-in, then we are automatically within our current streak, starting with, you know, uh, uh, number one, right? It's a one day streak so far. And because it's our first one, it's also our best. So our best streak is just one day so far. Now, the current range for our first check-in is simply going to be the start and end of our first check-in date. Uh, so for example, it would be today, if we're checking in today. So the result of step one's date, range, result of step one's date. It's just a, a range of one date in this case. Same thing for the best range because we don't have anything else. So it's a very, this is only gonna run one time for every user because they're only gonna check in for the first time, one time ever. Every other time after that is gonna be continuing a streak. So if this is a, a day that followed a check-in from the previous day, it's consecutive, then this one will run here um, versus restarting a streak. If they skipped days, then they're gonna start their count all over again. So let's look at the continuing streak. To know whether this is a continued streak, we're gonna look at the result of step one, that is our uh, new check-ins date minus the last date from our previous list of check-ins from result of step two. So when you're checking in, imagine it's today. Today's date minus the last date that I checked in. If that subtraction formatted as days is one, then we know we are checking in consecutively after our last check-in, right? That, that's the only value that that could be to know that uh, we had a check-in just yesterday. So if this is the case, then our current count is gonna increase by one. Current users streak current count plus one. It's whatever value is in this field previously, adding one to it. And then the current range is gonna update. So we'll take the existing start of the range. That doesn't change, right? If we're continuing the streak, the start stays the same, but the end now moves up to today's date, or in other words, the result of step one's date. 
brand new check-in. So that updates that range there. And that's what helps us, we're gonna look at the logic in the design, but it helps us with the color coding here um, to know whether the date is included in the current range or if it's included in the best range or not. Okay, would default to gray otherwise. So now let's look at restarting the streak. How would we know if we are restarting? Well, it's the same logic here, but if that uh, subtraction gives us uh, a value that's greater than one, so it's been more than one day since our last check-in, then we know that we've broken the streak and we're starting over. So the current count is gonna reset back to one, and then the current range is also gonna reset back to a one day range of today, or in other words, the result of step one's check-in date. This is our brand new date, okay? Now, the last piece here is to recalculate the best streak. We only want to recalculate the best streak if our current streak uh, or our last best streak has been beaten, right? If the current streak that we're on is now longer than the previous best streak. And I've split this out into another custom event just to make sure that the current streak gets updated first. So this is gonna trigger this custom event here called update best streak. I don't need to send in any parameters. I'm not returning any data because that's gonna be the last action in that flow. And within this, we're just running one action and we have a condition on here. So again, we need to check to see if the current streak we're on now is now longer than our previous best streak. I need to find how many days we're within the streaks. So I'm gonna calculate the current streaks end minus the current streak start formatted as days, right? So that would give me something like three right here. The end minus the start, that's three days. And I'm going to compare that to the best streak that I have currently. So is that greater than, this is gonna give me a yes or no, is that greater than my best streaks end minus best streaks start? So is three greater than four? Four was my previous best streak. In this case, no, it's not. And so this condition will fail. It won't update the best streak. Um, because I haven't achieved that. I haven't uh, surpassed my previous best streak. If this was a five-day streak that I'm currently in, then this action would run. And you can see that the best range would simply equal the current range. They would be the same if I'm currently in my best streak ever. And the best count would also equal the current count. Right? So you can see that the logic is really in the conditions mostly of when you want these actions to run. And we have these four fields in the data structure uh, to make it really easy to keep track of everything. Now, the final piece I have here is this uh, calendar design that I've created with the repeating group and the help of a plugin. You know, however you want to display that is completely up to you. You may just want to use these counters and that might be enough, but I'll show you how I put together this calendar here with the color coding. So this is actually a reusable element because I wanted to show two months at a time, the, the last two months for the users. They can have a bigger picture view. Um, the reusable element is going to uh, take in a specific date. Okay, so this one here, it's gonna take in the start of the previous month. So current date and time rounded down to the month minus one month, whereas this one here is the current month. So current date and time rounded down to month. The reusable element also has a property for a list of check-ins. Um, that calendar needs to know the user's history of check-ins. So we're gonna send that data in by doing a search of check-ins for this user. So both of these calendars are doing that exact same thing. So if we go into the reusable element, um, this is a repeating group. It is generating a list of dates with a plugin that I have here called Calendar Tool. You can see um, it's a great, great little plugin here for uh, creating custom calendars. Let's go over to it right here calendar tool, and this just comes with that one element, calendar tool. So all it needs to work is um, the, the date that you want to create the month of dates for. So this is the start of the month. Um, I'm not really referencing time in this case. Uh, you do need to fill in these values. So I just set it to the same value and I just uh, left it to the default time interval here. And then my repeating group is type date and the data source is the calendar tools generated list of dates. It's calendar aware, which is what makes it so helpful. Um, and you wanna set this to a fixed five by seven um, grid so that you always have the right number of weeks for any given month here. And then inside you can design however you want. Every cell is now going to be um, that specific date. Okay, so what I want to call out here is really just the conditions for the color coding uh, that I have. So. 
if and the order of the conditions is important. Um, if more than one condition is true, Bubble will prioritize the conditions at the bottom of the list. So be very mindful of that. So the first one is just your regular gray. If the calendar's list of check-ins, that's the property at the reusable element level. Okay, so let me go back here real quick. Here's the reusable element. This is a, just a group. Type of content is date. And I have my property here called check-ins. And it is simply a list of my check-in data type. Okay, so going back to my conditions over here, this one. So if the list of check-ins list of dates contains the current cells date, right? It's evaluating it for every single cell. Then we're going to color it gray, right? It'll do that. That's exactly what we're seeing with these other check-ins that are neither my current streak nor my best streak. So that's kind of the default. Then we go to the current streak. If the user's current range contains the current cells date and the current range contains today, then we're gonna change it to orange. The reason we have the second part of the condition is because the end of the range is going to be midnight and I want it to include today's date no matter what time it is. So I'm looking at the current range end and just equaling that, round it down to today's date. So it, it basically ignores the hour and minute component. It just looks at the date. Um, so again, if the current range contains to, uh, the current cells date, and the end of the range is the same as to is the same as today, then we know that this is our current streak that we're in right now. And then finally, we have our coloring for the best range. This one's pretty straightforward. As long as the best range contains the current cell's date, then we're going to change that to green. So that's why those date range fields are so helpful in our data structure. It makes these conditions so much easier. We don't have to do that much math uh, to, do, to uh, accomplish this design. The only other piece of logic that I have here that you may want for testing is to reset the user that you're working with if you ever want to start over and uh, test out different dates. So what I'm doing here is I'm deleting all of the check-ins created for that current user and I'm also clearing out those four fields on the user record and that starts you completely over. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to register for that free extended training over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop. You'll get immediate access as soon as you register. And the link for that is in the description below. Okay, happy building.